These are the top crypto stories of the day. We have AI coins, three in particular, just melting faces, making people incredibly rich. And we are fortunate enough to have Josh with us today, who is speaking to the CEO of AGIX. That's right, Ben Gertzel, the founder, just weeks ago. We have all the insight. We have all the alpha. And we're going to tell you the next deep in and AI coins are going to moon. It's time to discover crypto. Capital flight is coming to the United States. The dollar is going to zero. And that's what makes Bitcoin so special. You have to have gone through a couple cycles to understand. Once the price is able to clear this level, the breakout is on its way. This is your indication to jump in now. Oh, everybody, we're going to do two breaking news, breaking news. Josh yes. literally just said he has breaking news I right now. I have two notifications in my phone right now. Breaking Bitcoin crashes below 70 crave in, in the last 24 uh, hours here, down 1%, 1.2%. The following notification, Bitcoin has returned to $70,000 up oh, now okay. in the last 24 hours. So it is up and down zone today. I don't know what's happening on the charts, DZ. We just sat down. It seems like these markets are screaming to us. Uh, what is happening on you know what i actually want to pull up the five minute chart on bitcoin because yeah it is making oh, some get, very don't, very don't bald people. moves in the last 15 minutes uh, you can kind of see just oh whoa it's all vertical except for just there at the end yeah we've had uh some incredible uh bits of movement this is just dude that is insane this is an hour and a half ago so in the past hour hour and a half we've seen some pretty violent swings everybody uh that's very very high for a very small time frame and then this i think was a matter of minutes. Uh, let's see here. This was just about 20 minutes. Oh, oh, give me a new one. Give me a new one. Here we go. Uh, we have fallen. Wow, look at that. Five, about uh, about 5% in 25 minutes, 9, 30, 45 minutes. Yeah. Uh, wow. So pretty, pretty big swings happening from Bitcoin. We are going to talk about some AI coins as well, but we're seeing a lot of uh, movement. But then Bitcoin just decided to crap the bed uh, recently. But if we look at the top gainers, oh, yeah, look at that 50. Oh, yeah, we're going to get into all that in a second. We're back to our 70K. First, we have there, Bitcoin everybody. just, yeah, uh, battling, battling 70K right now. It looks like 69,850. It's it's uh, in the throes of a battle for 70K. ETH, ETH is down slightly. ETH is down 0.5%. You can see ETH here at $3,500. We keep scrolling down. We see Solana down 3%. We see XRP down 2.3%. Before we go into the other coins, Josh, I heard a rumor that you're releasing an XRP video tonight that is going to get everyone furious. Is that true? Might get them a little mad because I do believe they should be selling those bags or at least looking into diversifying for the first time because there is a ton of new cryptos, tons of new trends that are emerging. I really just want them to stop missing out on all these amazing gains in this industry. Uh, but first, I think we have to get people just... Put one in the chat, guys. Spam one in the chats if you believe this is just price manipulation on the hourly chart here. I mean, these swing trades are wild, right? You know, I guess put two if you don't think there's manipulation, but I think let's all be real here. Because uh, we are going to get to, of course, as always, altcoins that we're just watching. And honestly, there is a few. I want to say it right now. You're making me want to say it right now, but they have to wait till the end of the show. <laughs> oh, I like that. Uh, also, I liked how you, uh, you know, you kind of set the table there. You're like, type in one if you agree with me. And you just didn't say anything else. Uh, so. No, if you believe it was if price manipulation. If you disagree, then just don't even type anything. I didn't say if it, Look at all these people agreeing they with. They know. They know. It's price manipulation at its finest. And we are going to be getting to why in today's uh, articles here. So I see I'm people uh, typing in arrow. We just keep getting Seven. wins off that arrow call there. Arrow is now up. It was up almost 30% at one point. Now it's only, quote unquote, only up 14%. Uh, we were checking in the office because we shared this pretty early. I got in at, I think, 20, around 25 cents. Drew in the basement, Drew got in at 19, 18 cents, oh something gosh. like that for Arrow. So Drew's already looking at a, around a 10x. So uh, if you did jump in on Aerodrome, if you wouldn't mind, you know, hey, fire up that Coinbase or whatever you use. Where did you get in on Arrow? Because we are all doing uh, pretty well mm -hmm. on that one. All right, let's go back to the charts here, folks. Uh, we, we're looking at Cardano now is down 2%. Dogecoin Doing very well. Dogecoin is up 37% on the seven day. Dogecoin is more than doubled in the last month. I feel pretty good about uh, publicly buying that Dogecoin on camera. Do you remember do me doing that? It was about two weeks ago. So doing pretty good on the Doge call. I would not have thought it was going to outperform everything. That's just why sometimes DCAing into some of these dog coins could be a smart idea. Uh, Avalanche cooling down as well. It is down 4%. Shiba kind of picking up. Shiba was the big winner last night. Now Doge is the big winner today. 
Uh, looks like Doge, though, breaking away from that coin. Chainlink is down as well. Bitcoin Cash is pumping. But now let's look at the big movers. You just saw Mantle. Mantle is moving 50%. That mm-hmm. was a, a top, almost a top 30 coin. Uh, so if you got in on Mantle, good job there. Sui, Sui is up 20%. And then AGIX and Fetch. And we're going to talk about that uh, now. But first, you know, I, I teased. Arrow. You see this? Look at this. 22 wow. cents, 36 cents, 38 cents, 45 cents, 65 cents, 26 cents. Guys, this is just pure evidence that you need to be subscribed to this channel right now. Aerodrome is sitting at $1.79. So even though it's not a top 200 project, this is actually on par almost with Mantle I like performance. that. You said this is pure evidence that they need to be subscribed. We're not talking about the glove does not fit. You must have quit. No, this is evidence, folks. This is real <laughs> evidence, not Cato Kalen's testimony. Uh, but speaking of testimony, <laughs> Oh, Diddy's you, you actually got that reference. I, I, whoa, I'm surprised. Good job, Josh. Good job. Uh, speaking of testimony, you had testimony from the founder of AGIX. Mm-hmm. We're going to tease that in a second. First, I want to read this article. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll just in one word, how would you describe talking to the founder of AGIX in one word? Intellectual. Ooh, okay, okay. I like it. Intellectual. All mm-hmm. right. Well, what is the breaking news we're talking about? A big, big AI news. You just saw those AI coins going on a run. Why are they going on a a run? This is something almost unheard of in crypto. Breaking Fetch AI, Singularity, and Ocean Protocol discussing a possible merger to form ASI token. I like that. Uh, All right, so uh, they're uh, reportedly engaged in discussions regarding a potential merger of the crypto tokens to establish decentralized AI platform and foster collaboration among the three companies. Uh, We're talking about uh, the creation of the ASI token, which would possess a fully diluted value of approximately $7.5 billion. Bloomberg reported, citing people familiar with the matter. Well, the plans are subject to approval from the communities. An official announcement could be expected as early as today. When approached for comment, representatives for Singularity, Fetch, and Ocean declined to provide any official statements on the matter. Josh, you got to start uh, tweeting at your sources here, man. You got to yeah. say, hey, give me the skinny. Give me the alpha. I want Shake you to, I want you to, let's prank call Ben live. Okay, okay. no, let's not do that. Let's oh. not do that. Hey, that would be a uh, good content. I got excited for a second. I think it content. would be good. You know, just like the, the robot answers. Yeah, so, or you know, we can find some like <laughs> Bart Simpson things that he has Mo. Uh, you know, yeah, we could uh, we could find some things to yeah. say here. I, and I did pull it up here. So if you guys don't know, all you have to do is type in, I believe, Ben Gertzel on YouTube. We are going to be the third uh, video here with 132,000 views. This video is going absolutely viral, just talking about the future of artificial intelligence and everything he's doing in anticipation of this event. Now, we did not get the insights on the AISI token itself. Uh, but Ben will be joining us again, as always, on this channel here soon, and we'll be getting the answers that you guys want in the comments. So let us know in the chat what you guys want to ask them. We'll write down some of these questions, and we will obviously just ask him live on this show. Everybody stream. just wants one question. Is it going to keep going up? Is it, <laughs> up and up only. Up only and to the right here. Uh, but yeah, they have a huge possibility at now competing for a top 10 cryptocurrency. So this is a really bullish narrative or at least the decentralized AI sector. Uh, Saigo is wondering, guys, is it still worth it to buy Arrow? We we did see it pump. Uh, I would say it did just pull back 10%. It pulled back about 20 cents. It went from $2 to $1.80. You know, I, I don't think you're going to hate it. It could pull back a lot farther if Bitcoin continues to fall. You might be able to get in uh, you know, a lot I, cheaper, I would, but I wouldn't hate a DCA strategy you here. Guys, you guys know the strategy here. You got to get the 350 likes. We show you guys a hidden gem at the end of this, and we'll give you another Dex because we've been talking about DeFi. We've been talking about Layer 2s. Not only is Aerodrome pumping, Velodrome is pumping. So I know a lot of you in chat holding Velo here. Now at 19 cents, it touched 20 cents this morning. Or like 19 cents at 19.5 cents, but there's tons of other dexes and emerging ecosystems out there we're going to be covering in today's show. So make sure you guys stick around. All right, and uh, sticking around here to, with this article, Oceans has benefited the most. This thing has risen 37 percent over the past 24 hours, uh, folks. We're, I was doing a little bit of dubious TA. If you got in at fetch, uh, I just dubious. lost it. Uh, here we go to January 1st. If you jumped in on this AI coin just on the first here. You are up uh, 4.5x. So if, if you had uh, $2,500 and you put it in, you were up above $10,000. Uh, that's enough to buy a Chinese EV there. Uh, that's what I've heard, at least. I heard they got cheap EVs over there. And, and uh, Marty but, asked a great, 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 great question. A, a question but, on Gway? 
Uh, no, the three companies need to merge doesn't raise any alarms to you. I actually no, so was Mar- all right, I got that. a hot take on this. Mm-hmm. All right, so they're all in the same realm here. They're all trying to make a marketplace for AI companies. And so when you think about a merge, merge kind of makes sense in this point because they're directly competing with each other where if they collab, they really, there's just nothing but upside here. So it's not like Apple versus Google, then you're combined. You're like, well, what's ended up happening here? You're just making a marketplace for the builders to to get to the masses. And so why not combine all the efforts? And then really now we're the de facto one-stop shop for AI companies, AI dApps. And then so to me, I think there's very, very high success rate with this type of merger. It's not, it also is not two different companies that's like, well, I guess they want to do this. It's like Barstool merging with like a gambling thing online. You're like, oh, I guess there's a little bit of an overlap. No, this is seamless overlap and integration. So it should just be uh, all benefits. Yeah, and we'll have to do a deep dive in that ecosystem because we're talking about now $7.5 billion. And that's how big these will be together, all three of them combined. So the DEXs, the investments that are going to go in that sector are no longer going to be spread out against three different projects and three different industries and sectors. They're all going to be under one umbrella. So I look at it as the same way as what Microsoft did with ChatGPT. They brought in a whole new board of directors. Why did they bring in a board of directors? Because they had a tool that was insanely powerful and they are making millions. They're going to make trillions of dollars off, of course, your guys' data in a closed source and just corrupted way. And they brought board of directors in because these people like Larry Summers are corrupted. They're, they're powerful. And we need a larger community. We need these to combine in a decentralized scale if we want to be able to compete with that big tech. So long term, I think this is incredibly bullish. I would really start paying attention to, though, what me and D's even calling out is what is being built on top of those layers that's going to be really important. So we'll get to that in another uh, uh, show. Breaking, breaking, uh, Coinbase loses most of motion to dismiss SEC lawsuit. Maybe uh, we'll, we'll uh, cover that towards the end. We'll find an article on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then someone is throwing out some uh, price stuff on Fetch. It looks like it might go down at the uh, valuation that they're given. Someone, I think, typed in 282. Right now, Fetch is $3.19. One thing I, I would need to double click on is it's fully diluted valuation. I don't know how many tokens are going to be released. Maybe there would be uh, a little bit of changing of math with the fully diluted versus release tokens. Uh, but back to AI here, merging AI with RWAs pioneers the next bull market in crypto. I think there's uh, kind of two things we've been talking about a lot lately here, real world assets. And since late 23, you got AI and real world assets have stood out as huge themes poised to spearhead the bull market in the crypto realm. By 2030, the market for RWAs is projected to reach $4 trillion to $5 trillion, while the market for AI is expected to reach uh, $738 billion by 2030. To me, that seems a little bit low. First, AI models, uh, similar to GPT-4, represents the highest innovation in natural language processing in machine learning, and then uh, empowering RWA with AI. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to see a lot of this. Um, AI is just going to be touching every sector. I think everything from... Foot Locker is going to have some sort of AI utilization, like, oh, more people size 12s live in Milwaukee versus Louisiana. Uh, AI is going to be touching every single thing. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's that's no big surprise there. Uh, here we have a coin gecko thing. Now, you want to kind of walk us through yeah. what this is. It says top real world assets coins by market cap here. Yeah. So this is going to be how you guys kind of keep up with to date, at least all of the top real world asset projects. And there's tons of categories out there. Now, what I wanted to point out with the RWAs is a lot of the ones that are pumping in the last 24 to seven days is we give you guys the truth here. We give you guys the transparent, just honest thoughts on what's happening in this, these sectors. And from my perspective, when you see Ondo not be in the top performer here and you just click on 24 hours and you see 230%, 200%, 160%, and you realize, oh, top 4,000 token, top 2,000 token. The reason why a lot of these are pumping right now, and I'm going to have you guys proceed with caution. This is a disclaimer for you guys. There's a lot of tweets going around on Twitter that I'm not going to show on this stream because it's just they're so ridiculous of people saying, oh, these are the projects BlackRock, the largest asset management company in the world, holds. Why are they saying that? Well, it's because these projects, guys, it's a smart marketing tactic. They will send $500, $1,000. They'll send maybe some of them will send $20,000 to BlackRock's wallets and then say, hey, BlackRock's been holding our crypto. These are going to be the next ones to pump in this narrative, even though there's no correlation or connection. It's just simply someone sent some money to their wallets. And so there's threads going around on Twitter right now of a lot of these projects pumping because BlackRock, quote unquote, holds them 
When the reality is, guys, five thousand dollars to BlackRock. You, you, even if it was five thousand, some of these are five hundred dollars. Some of them are two hundred dollars. Some of them are thousand dollars. You think they're going to even notice that's in their wallets? I mean, we're talking yeah. nine trillion dollar asset manager. That, that's not even a penny to them. Like, even if they dropped, the, there's a higher chance at them picking up that penny on the floor and actually paying attention to these projects in that space. So I, I just want to say, proceed with caution when you see these pumps. Don't go FOMO into them. But RWAs, though are going to be a big narrative. Real world assets is a really big push. You see CIP with Chainlink starting to really integrate this. It's going to be a massive narrative. You just need to make sure you're doing your own research and making sure you analyze where these cryptos are actually going to be heading in the future before just jumping in. Uh, yeah, it reminds me of uh, Shiba. Giving, they gave half their supply to Vitalik. Do you remember when they did <laughs> That's that? That's the perfect yeah, example. Yeah. So they actually get, it's a lot different than uh, just someone in the community giving some dust. Like, oh, uh, there's eight zeros after the decimal point. I'm going to give them 420 tokens. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's not BlackRock buying, obviously, folks. Uh, here we have, uh, speaking of real world assets, we got a big bank entering real world assets market with tokenized gold. Hey, man, we've been trading PAX gold for years. Where have you been at? Uh, also, Tether announces focus on AI, launching global recruiting efforts for a new AI division. What? Tether is just branching out, doing more and more things. Remember, they started buying and custodying uh, or holding Bitcoin on the balance sheet. Then they started mining Bitcoin and now they're starting to dip their so toes into AI. Me the company that prints the most amount of money in crypto is investing into AI. I think print is the wrong word there. Create? Transforms. Deploy? They transform paper into ones and zeros. Hmm. Hmm. And so I wouldn't say create. Create. But have they been create audited? is create is what our government does. Okay. They they're the ones who print dollars. And so I don't want to throw tether under the same. I don't want to paint them with well, the I, same I don't want ugly to put them under paintbrush. The same, you know. I, I'm look. I don't even mean the fun. I don't think they're going to go anywhere. But the Pentagon's passed just as many audits as tether. Uh, no, they they have uh, passed attestations by publicly traded and respected <laughs> firms. And it's a private uh, company, so I don't think we should have to expose a private company's true. books because, again, oh, I don't like it, so show me your books. It sounds, that sounds like fun. Uh, I mean, this in a bullish way is they now have how, $100 billion worth of USDT. Yeah, yeah. Do you think they have $100 billion in assets? I'd say it's something around there, yes. I would say they have that yes. plus some. I think they have an additional billion or five. I would say if they didn't, they could create more. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, Milwaukee, baby. Yeah, we'll throw out. Uh, all right, uh, throw out where you're from, and maybe I'll say something nice and something bad. Uh, Milwaukee, it's too dang cold, but boy, oh boy, do I love, uh, what is it called? Cheese curds? Is that what they're called? Yeah. Ooh, oh, man, is that those what those originated so from? freaking good, man. Uh, they at least have mastered it. All mm. right. Uh, in the mm. new press release for Tether, they announced they're expanding their AI focus and operations. They plan to expand into AI in several important areas. First, data plans uh, to pioneer the development of open source multimodal AI models to set new industry standards, driving innovation and accessibility within AI technology. Uh, they'll integrate AI solutions seamlessly. Oh, man, I love when people integrate solutions seamlessly into market-driven products. That's not word salad. Oh Leveraging gosh. the technology to address real-world challenges. Tell me what the heck you're doing, though. Uh, says the CEO here, AI stands poised to revolutionize... I'm not even going to finish that. Today's announcement establishes a new division within Tether, redefining uh, AI boundaries and democratizing privacy, preserving open AI technology, while setting industry benchmarks for industry, uh, innovation, utility, transparency. Really not saying what the heck they're doing there. If I had to guess, because right now they're not telling us a dang thing. We got to read between the lines here. If I had to guess, this is going to be arbitrage uh, removal. So they don't want Tether to be 99.9999. You know, they don't want it to be a dollar point zero 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 two. They just want it to be a flat dollar everywhere. Sometimes there's liquidity issues. Maybe AI will help keep it more tethered to a dollar. Nick, what are your thoughts? Well, where is Tether based out of? Uh, the Bahamas, right? El Salvador now? El Salvador? Oh, well, they have mining operations in South yeah, they America. They have a bunch of different... I think they're global at this yeah, point. Yeah, they're they're like global? Binance. They're everywhere. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, Binance, they're above us. They're does around Binance us. now do buy now with ADGM? Because Binance, that was the most goaded play, pulling in Richard Tang. I mean, you're talking about bringing in the Singapore Monetary Authority and the guy that developed the AD, uh, ADGM models, which is like, I don't know. We'll see where they stand. But we do have a very special guest joining us here today. Yes. Uh, someone we've had the opportunity to talk with multiple times, speak at multiple of their conferences. And Dan uh, and, will answer your question right after this. Don't you worry, speaking Dan. Speaking of a Dan, <laughs> you know, welcome to the stream, Daniel Keller, CEO of Flux. How are you doing today? Welcome to the stream. We're excited to have you. Oh, audio. Is that on me or? No, that's on Dan. 
And you might have a little bit of an issue. He was dropping uh, too much alpha. He said check, give that, me a check uh, now. <laughs> give me a check now. I think I got something. Daniel. Nope. Nope. See, well, you miss, he Now look, I, I have to shame him because he missed his tech check. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we fix this He's is nodding. so this is so perfect because we have Dan nearing because we can't hear the other Daniel asking, do you want to change your view on what is a realistic for market cap for Arrow? No, if anything, uh, I want to move it to the upside. I mentioned a billion dollars in a previous video. He's wondering, you know, is, is a billion dollars change? If we go to Arrow, uh, we're going to go a little live analysis. About right now. Here. Oh, oh, yeah. Hey, Dan, Ooh, hey, you're in. Dan, do you mind if I answer this market cap question real quick? Since I you already have started, at it, buddy, you have at uh, it. All right, uh, uh, maybe I'll uh, see what you think here too. All right, so Aerodrome is the top decks for base, and if we look at their market cap right now, already six hundred and fifty million dollars. I said, you know, it looks like this thing could hit a billion. Well, that means we only have about a two x ahead of us. I do feel that might be a little bit bearish because I found this out yesterday. I had no idea it went this high. Well, what is Uniswap's uh, market cap? And you look at Uniswap. Well, Uniswap is pretty close to ten billion dollars. So you're saying Arrow can only do. 10% of Uniswap? No, we aren't done. If you go to the max, Uniswap was worth more than $20 billion. And so now when I'm thinking, wait a minute, $1 billion market cap, Uniswap hit 20. I certainly think it can get more than 5% of Uniswap's uh, all-time high. And I think Uniswap will be higher this cycle. Uniswap will probably be 30, 40 billion. And so now three, 4 billion Seems quite possible. That's all I'll say there. So I, I hope that answers your question, Dan. But Daniel, how are you doing? Keller, you know, I hear uh, I hear flux. I'm an old head. I immediately think of, you know, you know what I'm thinking about, the flux capacitor, Back to the Future. Were you a fan of that movie? Of course. Yeah, and matter of fact, down at Cypherpunk, we had the DeLorean there as well. So, oh. you know, yeah, so... Um, and we are, we, we're actually in the future now with Flux, though. So we can't go back to the future. We're in the future. Love it. We're using the Flux capacitor. Yeah, for the, we're, we're the no. sequel. <laughs> we're back in the future, too. We're not one. Yes. We're not three. You know, no, we're, we're moving this. We're using this technology to move forward, not 50 years in the past to have awkward that's scenes right. with our mother. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't know why I went there, but uh, on a more <laughs> serious note, uh, you know, there's a lot of people, they, they don't know what Flux is. You know, could you just kind of uh, explain to people, you know, what, what is Flux, uh, you know, for the new people uh, who just aren't familiar? Well, Flux is the world's first and largest decentralized compute network. So essentially, we are the AWS of blockchain, and it's not some pie in the sky horseshit white paper that you know people are talking <laughs> about. It actually works. You can go there today. You can deploy front ends, back ends, game servers, WordPress websites, which you know we know about fifty percent of the internet runs on WordPress. Well, you can do it on Flux for penny on, pennies on the dollar, and we're really bringing real world use cases to blockchain because let's face it, the number one question that we get when we're trying to you know, bring somebody into the blockchain space is, well, what's it used for? Well, Flux answers that question with a resounding thud because we do all of it. So whether it's AI, rendering, front ends, back, back ends, game server, da, 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 it's all here today. So we're super excited to be fixing a major problem. And that is not only do we have AI scaling issues because we're gonna run into an AI scaling uh, computational resource issue, uh, so we're bringing together the people that have compute resources to the people that need compute resources. And that's that's the end game. Um, and we're also fixing another problem. So there's all this emphasis and this attention about building AI out. What about the yin to the yang? What about the other way? What about something that's going to detect whether or not it's an AI generated um, video document, whatever? So we're working on utilizing our own network for a project called Project Mayhem, where we are the yin to the yang to AI. So um, lots of stuff being built on, on the platform. And we are probably, without a doubt, and I would challenge anybody out there to go up against us, we are, without a doubt, the one true proof of work blockchain that actually brings tons of utility and tons of use case to blockchain. I, I can't help but get excited off this latest AI news, and I'm, I'm thinking Flux might be a, a big winner from this. So we have the big merging of these three AI companies, but they largely are just AI marketplaces. It seems like Flux is able to work with every single project on this marketplace. I mean, I, I can't even think of a DAP. If you're doing all these things, it's really not a DAP that you wouldn't be able to work with. Uh, are you excited from this merger or, I mean, is this a good thing or a bad thing for Flux? I think it's a good thing. What I don't want to see is too many projects starting to merge together and then you have somebody that's just a monopoly over the product. That's why open source projects like Flux are so 
pivotal. Do we want Microsoft programming AI for the future? I don't think we do. Do we want Google doing it? I don't think we do. Uh, so, you know, having an open source Are you product- you you don't market, trust racist platforms or? I don't, yeah. Uh, Google's, <laughs> Google's old saying was don't be evil. Flux is don't be evil again, because ultimately that's what it comes down to. They want everybody's data. They want to, you know, uh, monetize it, utilize it, and you get jack shit for it. So, oops, I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss, but crap, you get crap. Yeah, for you it. can. Yeah, no, you get to go <clears throat> all in here. Just make sure uh, you don't change your motto in like 2017, like Google did. And you know, I don't know what they even changed it to. I think they just stopped saying it. They just, you know, they're no longer. They they're just, just took evil it out, now. took it out of the <laughs> yeah, just took it took it out of the code base and everything. And by the way, they're not super happy with me using the "Don't be evil again" scenario. But guess oh, what? Really? I don't give it. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Yeah, so, and you're open source, so there's no going yeah. back, right? You know, it's not. What like are you going to do? What are you going to do? It, it's uh, in you code. Know, I think for a lot of the audience that's going to be coming in, of course, obviously AI and Deepin has been the talk of 2024. We just had the Nvidia conference with GTC Summit. I don't know if you had the opportunity to attend it, uh, but this was a big moment. It was a pivotal moment with a lot of major breakthroughs, with things like Blackwell coming out. Uh, mm -hmm. What are you anticipating coming into the, later on of 2024 and 2025 with this whole narrative around decentralizing these physical infrastructures that exist today? And how are you doing that with GPU mining? Well, what they didn't tell you is NVIDIA is pushing to have a monopoly on the market. Let's face it. These large, like the Blackwell, other big uh, products, I mean, you, you pay $48,000 for a graphics card. You could easily deploy something on Flux and use that crowdsource function to get it pennies on the dollar compared to what it's going to be to one, buying the hardware, two, deploying the hardware because you have to have a physical location to deploy these things. So that means data rooms and data servers and all that kind of stuff. So it we're just a better solution. It, you know, when you look at it, uh, when when Uber started to come out, OK, people were like the cab system in New York was freaking out because they have a monopoly. Right. The yellow cabs ruled New York and now along comes Uber and it completely disrupts that business model. Flux is exactly that for what NVIDIA is doing now. And I'll tell you right now, we're working with AMD so that they can participate in it as well. So and oh. you're right. Yeah, you're right. Um, and by the way, that's the first time I've, I've mentioned that. But we absolutely want to work with both platforms because oh. um, AMD realizes it, it has a lot of room to make up and there's, you know, they have FPA, FPGAs, they've got, you know, uh, NVIDIA cards or, or AMD cards, so on and so forth. We want to utilize all those cards. So really, we're taking it to them. We're taking it to the big guys. You know, they made yeah. fun of Amazon when Amazon launched. Who, who's going to buy books online? But really what Amazon was doing was building this delivery model, this framework where you could drop anything in there, socks. Uh, TVs, radios, whatever, didn't matter. Framework was built. Flux is that framework. We've built the framework out. It doesn't matter what you're doing in technology. You can drop that into our framework and you can run with it. Love that, love that. I want to ask you about mining in a second. Some people are interested in mining it in our uh, chat as well, but you brought up the monopoly that NVIDIA has. And I want to ask you, uh, you know, a potential scenario for America maybe emerging as a leader in the market. You know, there's few CEOs and founders that have a reality distortion field around them. You know, they say Steve Jobs had this. Uh, Elon Musk has this. There's another person, Sam Altman is what I, I don't like to say his last name normally. I like to call him Altman. He says he wants to bring chip manufacturing to the U.S. Every single thing this man has touched has been successful by most metrics. Are you willing to bet against Sam in America or are you going to say, no, this man might be able to pull this off? I think he could pull it off. Um, you know, my, my, I'm not a huge Sam fan because... Yeah, nor, if, nor am I, but if, he is. If, he does have a track if, record. He absolutely does. Um, you look at some of the relationship he had with Elon Musk and some of the things he did with OpenAI. That's the whole reason why Flux was built the way it was from the beginning is we couldn't... Nobody can come in and buy Flux, per se. No VCs, no large companies. If Microsoft called us tomorrow and said, we'll give you a gazillion dollars for the platform, it doesn't matter. We've baked it in. I don't have that choice. Nobody has that choice. And I think with Sam, um, I don't necessarily agree with his business practices, as, you know, especially with the WorldCoin scenario and so on and so forth. I mean, getting people's retina scanning. I mean, this the cypherpunk in me just goes insane when I hear this, right? But I do think if he targets his attention to something like bringing that chip manufacturer back, which is desperately needed, we need to get the hell out of Taiwan. We need to get it to this side, even if it's not in the U.S. or it's in Mexico or something of that nature. 
we need to get it here in the States, and we know that. But but I do believe that N- NVIDIA is going to work hard to keep their monopoly. There's no doubt about that. True. You know, and, and by the way, uh, Flux is a NVIDIA Inception graduate. We worked with NVIDIA, right? Yeah. And, you know, I would say they hate miners because it takes away from their business case, right? They want people to buy a, a new graphics card every two years. So they don't necessarily like what we're doing because we're reappropriating, you know, if you have 1070 TIs or 1080 TIs laying under your desk somewhere, now you can all of a sudden participate in rendering an AI and they don't like that. Um, so it does disrupt their their business model. It's going to be very precarious. It depends on which administration gets in too. I think if you yeah. see Trump get in, he'll want it here. Yeah, you know, and that you kind of touched on the CHIPS Plan 4 Act, like re- bringing back the semi-manufacturing or semiconductor manufacturing back to the states. Now, of course, we've heard from many different analysts and economists on how long that's going to take. Is it going to take four years? Is it going to take five years? But you mentioned this strong monopoly that's already being created today. So where does Flux like fit into this category or how can retailers that are looking at Flux be able to benefit from from the transition of semiconductor production coming back to the states, whether that is renting out their services. Like, how do we stop NVIDIA? This is now a $2 trillion giant that, you know, DZ was just making a joke with me here with touching, I guess, arms that pumps other projects' Yeah, he's, names. he's not going to touch your arm, you know, if you keep talking about uh, yeah. NVIDIA like this. You know, Huang won't yeah, touch your arm on stage. He's not going <laughs> to... He's, he's, not, he's <laughs> long far away from touching my arm so but yeah no. so no and i and i think what it comes down to is this i mean if you're willing you know to bend the knee to the king um you know there are projects out there that are bending the knee right now and saying yeah we'll name you one. know you, you you know who Look, it is you know you know <laughs> one you know who it is we're near an idea you know what is i'm it saying like a near, we're, we, you're near right yes um <laughs> You know, so they're bending the knee. And then what that does is it just destroys decentralization as a whole, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, these people that are really super happy to be working with the Googles of the world, you got Avalanche that deployed infrastructure on Google, so on and so forth. Look, the cypherpunk in me is like, we're no better off in in Web2 DPIN if you're deploying on these centralized platforms than if you just kept it in Web2.5, which is just this hybrid world, right? So... It doesn't challenge these big monopolies. Personally, if we want to go after NVIDIA, you're going to utilize Flux. Whether you're, and Flux can use, you know, we're already partnered with NiceHash. We're already partnered with Hive OS. So if you're mining crypto, you're going to be using Flux some way, shape, or form. Um, You know, we've partnered with with Lumen for basically a seamless Web 2, Web 3 transition. Because, you know, you'll have these people that don't necessarily want to move everything tomorrow. They want to work between the two. We'll also provide them with compute resources because these folks don't necessarily want to launch these massive colo data centers. They want to have resources on demand. Universities are the same way. So, and I mean, that's how we end up taking them down. Uh, People just don't understand the value of what DPIN really will be. And when I'm talking true DPIN, I'm talking about decentralized protocols and infrastructure that absolutely brings a decentralized value add and not some hybrid bullshit uh, that sits yeah. in a server room somewhere. Can, can you dive into that actually a little bit more too? Because this is a huge takeaway. People don't realize that the majority of your blockchain protocols and systems out there completely rely on things like AWS, Amazon Web Services. They know what AWS is and all they hear is, oh, Amazon partnering with Project Capitalism, money pour in, right? That's like all yeah. they're watching and trajecting for. So what is the difference between Flux and AWS just from a very basic fifth grade level of understanding that makes Flux so important? Yeah, I mean, if you deploy on AWS, they control your data, they control your infrastructure, and they control your future. If you deploy on Flux, you control your data, you control your infrastructure, and you control your future. There's a big difference there. You know, yeah, mic drop, move on. There is a reason why we're starting to all of a sudden become aware of the importance of our data. And we're going to start making steps, extreme strides to make sure that we have access to our data. Where other, where else would we accept subpar, you know, a guy shows up at your house, knocks on the door, walks in, starts making dinner and everything else, doesn't leave, you know, eats his meal, uh, takes a shower, do, does a whole night, and then and it walks out, and you have no control over it. That's essentially what Google does to you. That's what Microsoft well, does to you. Oh, you just they brought up Google. You. Well, Google's kind of in the news right now. Uh, we have some uh, pretty big news. Uh, what is it? The VP pick, uh, just chosen by RFK, is Google founder's ex-wife. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be good or bad for tech. I don't know if you had any thoughts on that. 
I think it's good for the 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 Borg, the the people that are already doing it, right? I mean, we we've, we've got to be serious. Yeah. We've got to be seriously careful because if we mess around too much, we'll lose control over uh, the, the deep end narrative. And you know, like I'm going to DC. I'm like taking it to them. Uh, you know, I have in in May. I'm going down to speak for you know in DC at the financial and uh, technology forum, and I'm going there and I'm going to tell them the way you've done things in the past, your reactive status to how technology develops is not going to work. You've got to change the thought process and you have to understand we no longer control deployments at the base layer. And yep. people will be able to do, do the things that they want to do. It's, it's going to be terrifying. And I've said it before and I said it again, I'm going to be the enemy someday. You know, people like all of us that are champion for that, they'll be the enemy someday. So uh, hopefully we... It's well well developed enough that it doesn't matter. I, I think, you know, uh, a lot of people want to be enemies of uh, the, the bad actors in this space, the bad actors in the financial world, and they want to join your fight. They want to be soldiers. They want to be nodes in this uh, on the good board, right? They, they want to be the, the yes. knee joint for C-3PO here. Maybe that's not the best example, but how would one go about mining uh, this token, you know, I mean, what, what's the first step? You know, what, what, what's something that maybe they could uh, Google just to uh, put themselves in the right direction here? Well, first things first. Uh, you know, uh, there Don't used to be Google. a meme. There, there <laughs> used Google. there used to be a, there used to be a meme that went around that you know, dad, dad, what did you do? You know, when Flux was whatever, and then underneath that it was as a mind Flux, effing legend, right? Yeah, yeah. At some point in in our future, we're going to have to explain to our children what we did while this technology was advancing forward. If, if that response to your children or your children's children is, I do join the evil empire of Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and so forth, you're not, you, you're here for the wrong reason, right? We're here for, we're here to lay something for the future. So mining is absolutely paramount. Proof of work is absolutely paramount. And I'm a maximalist. If it's proof of work, then it is blockchain. If it's proof of stake, it's not. And I'll probably piss some people off by saying that. Now, that doesn't mean proof of stake can't get, get more decentralized by deploying its infrastructure. You know, we've reached out to Solana multiple times. Let us deploy validators on Flux. Let us help you stay up. And they're not interested. Wonder why that is. So, you know, really what it comes down to is, you know, network validation, consensus mechanism, and now participating in proof of use of work is absolutely paramount. And with Flux, you don't have to necessarily mine Flux. You can mine, if you're using uh, Flux Core, which is our mining application, you can mine Caspa. You can mine Kadena. Ooh. You can mine any product that you want in the proof of work space and still be utilized for proof of use. I, I would add a fourth Sorry. thing to that. Uh, you know, mining tokens is truly the only way to buy or to obtain tokens without Big Brother being aware. You know, because if you're buying exactly. it on an exchange, you're buying it on even a decentralized exchange, they're tracking it somehow. But if you have a fresh wallet, you're mining, maybe, you know, follow all local rules and regulations, but say you use a VPN, that's truly private coins. And some would say the only yep. way to get a truly private coin. So, uh, yeah, join the Rebel Alliance or be a bootlicker is what I'm hearing. Hmm. Yeah. Be a bootlicker. Yeah, don't do that. Don't be a bootlicker. And, and, and ultimately, that's what it is. That's why we're, we're uh, ASIC resistant. So no, no ASICs on Flux. It's all GPU. Why? Because anybody can plug a GPU into their computer and start mining Flux anywhere in the world today with no limitations. Are so, you saying you ASICs know, and Bitmain, they're centralized and control some really large mempool that's corrupted by other asset managers like BlackRock who are lobbying the very policies that are preventing deep no. to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of saying that. That's the ah, short kinda. thing that I say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, let's face it. That's the kind of stuff we've got to think about. And oh. you know, flux flux is a is a fork of Bitcoin. I mean, our our core code is Bitcoin code, and we did it that way. We just we just built our secondary uh, a layer two network on top of that. So the technology is continuing to grow. Uh, you know, one of Satoshi Nakamoto's greatest quandaries, and if you look at Satoshi uh, Satoshi's emails, he talks about this excess of compute resources. We don't necessarily need these, the, the total amount of compute resources that is validating the network, transactional validation, consensus mechanism that Bitcoin has today. Could it use proof of use work? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why Flux has kind of built it out. So I think you could see this 
this product be used in many projects, even hybrid scenarios, where maybe you have a proof of stake system that also has a proof of work side of the house. You could absolutely see that with this. Yeah, well, Daniel, let us know what's happening in Capitol Hill. We'd love to get connected as well, just from here at Discover Crypto. As you know, we've worked with Florida Blockchain Business Association, have been huge advocates behind proof of work policies and are very anti ESG because we think we can clean up a lot of the space actually utilizing proof of work and miners. But Amen. Daniel, it's always a pleasure having you on here today. If there's anything yeah. you want to leave off with, chat, make sure you go follow him on X. We're going to put it in the Twitter here. But what do you got coming up other than, of course, you approaching Capitol Hill? Or is that where you want everybody to head with you? No, we have some big events coming up. We uh, Literally within the next uh, three days, we're going to launch our marketplace for Flux Edge, which is our enterprise side of things. So everybody check that out. Um, we also head into Token 2049. Uh, we have a big event there. I'll also be speaking there. So, um, you know, if anybody's there, look me up. If you got any questions about Flux, follow us online, runonflux.io, on Twitter at, at runonflux or me at DAK underscore Flux. And guys... You guys are excellent. Thanks for having me on no, again. You're excellent. Love the hoodie. Thank you. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> Fuego. All right. Thank you very Thank much, you, Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> Great job. That might have been uh, the best founder I've ever talked to on this show. You know, he was up there, is, is at least top two, maybe with Charles Hoskinson. I'm very, very just bullish on that token. I did not advertise, not paid anything yeah, no. like that. It was it's just, just you a know, friend we, of the channel friend of the channel yeah. and uh, it was perfect was... timing too with the merge going on today yeah a lot of people i think very underestimate what flux is trying to do and accomplish and there's mm -hmm. very few founders out there chat and let's get some w's in the chat just for daniel yeah, and the that, flux that, community that because taking the courage to even approach capitol hill you're going against a sea of thieves he's fighting the government and fighting nvidia yeah like that's pretty yeah. crazy and he fights people on twitter all day that's literally what he does and okay, he ain't quiet about him. it he's very loud no, about yeah, it it's he's, a great he's place to be uh, and what, he's what is his events, uh, twitter so. at there we we have it daniel pinned at the top of the chat okay okay dak Wrong. flux dak underscore flux all right all right uh dak underscore flux all right yeah i'll follow that in a bit yeah i'm gonna make sure i follow him i just don't want to auto populate some weird stuff there all right uh <laughs> now let's talk about bitcoin a little bit there's a crisis there's a crisis brewing a bitcoin crisis everybody oh i saw a couple other cities uh i saw charlotte i saw miami uh nick you got probably strong opinions on both those cities miami yeah. i love their bodegas bad thing why the heck do you have traffic at 3 20 in the morning well, there's always traffic. It sucks. Charlotte, Charlotte yeah. wants to be Miami of North Carolina, but it's in North Carolina. No, so that's Charlotte, Charlotte wants to be the Nashville of North Carolina. Yeah. But it, yeah, it just, it it's can't, not there. it's not dedicated enough to learn the guitar. <laughs> that and too many bankers. Yeah. There's too many big bankers. All right. Uh, tell me where you're from and I'll say something nice in. I'll roast it too. All right. A uh, Bitcoin sell side liquidity crisis. What the heck? All right, more word salad, folks. This is actually pretty doom and gloom for people uh, trying to suppress Bitcoin's price, that is. Now we're seeing Bitcoin move for the first time since 2010. We're seeing some old coin moves. Why are we seeing old coin moves? Because there's not enough Bitcoin on the market, everybody. This uh, analysis count down to a supply squeeze unlike any other one which should come within the next year. Uh, so we have less time ever than remaining before demand outpaces supply, according to a new report here. And 12 months before available Bitcoin dries up, partly thanks to U.S. Uh, spot uh, ETFs here. The ETFs having a big, uh, you know, uh, you know, adding to that for sure. And then, folks, one thing I want to add, Grayscale is going to run out eventually. And then this is really, really going to start adding to uh, some of the buy side pressure. Also, only accumulating addresses. So this is only having accumulating addresses. Those with no outbound transactions were included in its calculations, meaning that net demand could still be higher. I mean, not this isn't people who are getting in and out of uh, Bitcoin, trying to catch some tops, trying to catch some bottoms. These are people who are literally only buying and never sending any Bitcoin out of the wallets. This is only considering demand from accumulating addresses, which may be considered as the lower end of Bitcoin demands, it writes. Uh, 22,000 Bitcoin from 2010 are on the move. Uh, the sell side liquidity crisis is waking up some of these old whales and waking up some of this old supply. And if you really have to ask me, Nick, let me know what you think of this. I think this is OTC deals, OTC market. And then if people don't know what OTC market is, it's where a buyer and a seller trade some Bitcoin off, off exchanges. You know, there's no order books. There's no impact of price. It's just 
two whales meeting in an office building somewhere or in a uh, red roof in lobby. And then so these OTC <laughs> deals are going to run out these old whales. Look, you got these OTC buyers. They're just scooping yep. up these old Bitcoin whales. Like, give me more of your Bitcoin. Give me more of your Bitcoin. That's going to run out soon. They're saying in about 12 months. I think it's OTC. Do you think it's OTC? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's, I don't think there's any other way that it could be because we're not seeing it going through. Yeah, yeah. We're not seeing, uh, yeah, exactly. And when we do, you know, there's a lot of speculation on oh, this probably BlackRock or, you know, because yeah. we're watching the Coinbase wallets as well as uh, yeah. all those wallets with between one and 10,000 uh, crypto. Uh, crypto markets added $150 billion overnight as Bitcoin ETH soared to 10-day peaks. Uh, but then we had uh, some pretty crazy price action on the short term. Uh, what are we doing right now? Okay, we started to bounce a little bit, and then it looked like it just rejected off this uh, point of control, and now going back down again. We'll have to uh, we'll keep an eye out on Bitcoin right here on the five minute candles. If you want to see a little more volatility, charts in a second. Um, I'm seeing uh, it looks like it maybe wants to head further down. Man, I was oh, man, I was almost gonna long are you some boom. Excited? You're no, I was gonna excited? long some boom because boom is just starting to look good on the larger time frames. <clears throat> and you know what? <laughs> Wow, Boehm holding up better than Bitcoin uh, because it does seem like it's maybe finding a local bot. I'm not saying go buy Boehm, everybody. It's a meme coin. Just, you know, some TA on it's starting to look uh, pretty interesting there. Uh, we have uh, Bitcoin I's 71K as a short-term whale. See $6 billion <laughs> in profits. Uh, so big, big profit being made by the whales as they're basically selling into these pumps. And you can see it right here in the price chart. So, uh, you know, just kind of spelling that out there in the price. Uh, Bitcoin to test. 80k before april 20th today's the 27th 20 there's 31 days in march 24 days we're gonna see 80k what do we feel about that are we gonna see 80k in the next 24 days that's pretty bullish look i think it's i think it's very possible because especially as we anticipate the bitcoin having which is going to be the this is the biggest bitcoin having in bitcoin eco ecosystems history guys nakamoto upgrade runes protocol which is going to be bringing meme coins and nfts to bitcoin in a like like it's gonna be like solana that's going to be the most basic way i can say it there's going to be a huge emergence of this new sector but in the short term Right now, over the coming weeks, DZ was what everybody I think wants to pay attention to right now. We do see a lot of liquidations only opening up here at the uh, the sixty seven thousand dollar level. So this last move we had, where we just had this like flash crash in the last what two hours at this point, obvious liquidation grab. What we want to pay attention to is I'm on the twelve hour. We are starting to see a significant amount open up above seventy six k. And if you zoom out to the seven day chart here you'll notice we are eating away that liquidation zone. And it actually got completely eaten out this morning here at $72,000. Yeah, just went in there, destroyed it. Uh, yeah, it's easy smirking over here. So what I would say is, you know, there could be a little bit of more downside action, but right now, uh, price momentum is starting to move the upside. I would be very cautious of the $63,000, $64,000 zone. But to be honest, I think what we saw this morning was a very clear, obvious liquidation grab. And we just came up to the $72,000, touched it. We had a sell order, we got that liquidation, that market manipulation from those market makers. And it looks like to me, we are going to move uh, higher here in the coming week. So we can get a little bit of a pullback here, but ultimately, uh, bulls do not look exhausted. All right. Well, in the coming weeks, remember, he's saying it's going to 80K. It's Mike Vandepop. I pulled up the tweet right here. <laughs> this is what the article is referencing. And if uh, we go to the tweet uh, itself, so he's saying 24 days, probably going to hit around 75 to 80K pre having. And then after that, we are correcting. Here's the cool part, though. During the consolidation correction phase, I expect altcoins to outperform. So, uh, you know, maybe uh, just be careful dumping all those altcoin bags, dumping all the, the coins that you're up in. If you are going to dump it, maybe, you know, put in some underperforming altcoins. You don't want to miss some pumps because these pumps can... You don't want to be on the sidelines. That is max pain. Max pain isn't you have an asset and it falls 20%. Max pain is you sell an asset and then it rips 20%. And then you buy in, and then it dumps, and then you end up just, you know, kind of losing your sats there. Uh, Franklin Templeton, they being a new crypto SMA uh, amid Bitcoin ETF hype. Uh, the SMA is a short-term management. Uh, what is it again? I want to see. Uh, I forgot what it was. SMAs. They offer investors exposure to a range of exposures that go beyond Bitcoin. Currently, the only crypto asset that the ETFs can hold directly here. Uh, so they, the fund giant with more than a trillion in assets has uh, created this uh, digital asset dynamic BTC ETH separate, oh, okay, separately managed account. 
as some, uh, the company said just yesterday. Peter Schiff is back in the news. Peter Schiff, the gold bug who hates Bitcoin. He's the Bitcoin critic. He has named former President uh, Donald Trump's DJT shares as the next successor to cryptocurrency. Uh, he's confirmed that the stocks of uh, his Truth Sh Social SPAC, special purpose acquisition company, went live today as an official company under the ticker DJT is a worthy successor to Bitcoin. Okay, what are, what are you doing, uh, Peter Schiff? Just tell people to buy Bitcoin already. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, but yeah, True Social uh, hit the stock market and it just started pumping. Trump has never been richer is my understanding. So today he's never had more net worth. Um, so, oh really? Oh, so you're still planning to <clears throat> sell your? Baron's happy. Yeah, he is. He is. But we had Ezekiel say, Josh, you still planning to sell it before the Bitcoin having with this price action? Yeah. So I still anticipate upside, guys. We have 25 days, almost four weeks. A lot can happen in four weeks, guys. I mean, if you just zoom out on Bitcoin chart right here, look at the daily. Right. This is like wow weekly momentum. So every single week we're having significant price action. This right here was a span of, man, I don't even know how many weeks at that point, but very few weeks, Bitcoin's price action can move to the upside. So what I'm going to be really watching for, and I keep saying this, guys, if we're approaching you know, those new all-time highs, we're at 80K, we're at 85K, I truly honestly believe at $80,000, you're going to have mad euphoria come into this market, uh, and the price is going to move quickly. When people say like, oh, there's going to be a blow-off top in these markets, yeah, I'm not, I don't think this bull market's over whatsoever. Just as a trader, as someone that's been here for multiple cycles, I'm looking to scrape a lot off the table and then have a pullback and then buy back in and just make even more money, right? Rather than just simply hold it. This is something I'm personally doing and I am expecting to do that here by the Bitcoin having coming up this cycle. So, All right, uh, Tom Crown uh, just tweeted out one hour ago, uh, less than, or right at it. What are the best crypto YouTube channels? I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna go ahead and plug ourselves, give ourselves oh, a pat on the back. Right now. Go there. raid that, guys. Let's uh, go I, I raid do that. want to, uh, let's Get see, let's, there, let's shout out a couple other people. Jason Casper, you know, I'm just, I'm just gonna throw out the ones I've watched most do, recently. Um, do Red Panda Mining. Red Panda. He's, he's okay. Probably one now, of the, uh, see, now I don't think I have the right J. You know what? I'm, I, I can't Casper, even do this because it's going to be scams. I'm a freaking link. Some block of this, runner. Like, Shout out Block Runner. Block Runner. All yeah. right. Block we'll Runner. Do okay. I'll, I'll do it from the DC account. All right. All right. Yeah. I, don't, I just don't want to like tag yeah. some guys, fake accounts. Guys, go raid there. that. Go raid that. And when you come right back, we're going to get into altcoins. So, guys, make sure you guys go raid that tweet. All right, so uh, next story, let's talk about debt. All right, so we got some UK Boo. news not looking great, Boo. everybody. Soaring US debt has potential to replay UK's 2022 market shock, according to this uh, CBO or CBO's <laughs> warning here. Bitcoin and gold may already be prying in a crisis scenario. Both recently uh, set new record highs here. So it looks like, uh, all right, in 22, the Prime Minister Liz Truss announced radical measures, including deep tax cuts and billions of spending, even as their debt was surging, uh, calling uh, for fiscal prudence here. So they've never had more debt. And they said, all right, well, the solution is lower taxes to spur the economy and <coughs> we'll spend more to spur the economy and then ended up, uh, you know, hurting their stock market quite tremendously and it really just made their situation worse in the long run. And it looks like we're maybe going to replace or re replay that uh, playbook in America. And they added that the U.S. is not yet in the same position, but higher interest <coughs> rates could raise the debt servicing costs to a trillion dollars in two years as bond markets could snap back. And folks who were here yesterday, hit that like button. If you remember the visualization of a trillion dollars and how scary that was when you compared it to even a hundred billion or a billion or let alone a hundred million. It's not looking like it's going to uh, play out good in the long run. Balaji had a tweet about it. The economy isn't real. It's propped up by record debt. They will fake it until they break it. Uh, and this is uh, just gross issuance of U.S. Treasuries quarterly. And you can see the, uh, the, the panorama right there. Is that a double top? And now, now we're doing a little bit of a double top right there. Uh, so maybe it reverses. No, probably just going to keep going in one direction. And that's, uh, we're going to spend, we're going to print more money, print more money, print more money. And as our debt grows, we have to print more money to pay off our debt, which makes our debt, you know, is growing higher and higher and higher. We're debting, we're borrowing, we're paying not enough. Uh, we're just hurting the dollar day after day after day after day. So buy some Bitcoin, everybody. What does this mean for, uh, all right, people asking, what does it mean for the price action? People need. Uh, people are still doing the math on the fully diluted valuation. If you're talking about the big AI merger, every coin is pumping today. So it looks like you know 
the markets are happy, but uh, the quants and the nerds and the counts or the bean nerds. counters, they're going to come in and they're going to, oh, 87% of the supply is out on this token, but 72% is out on this token. And then we do the math and they're getting 33% and then we're going to carry the one. And, and then the analysts are going to uh, have a lot more math. We haven't had the time to break down the math and look at the fully diluted valuations, look, but the markets are happy. Buy the rumors, sell the news. That is what I get from this. There's going to be some hype up to the merger. I don't think the tokens will be too crazy. It's going to be Fetch is going to turn into ASI. And then Ajax and Ocean are going to convert to whatever the token comparison is. So it's probably going to be like one to two because I believe they're worth less than Fetch at this point. So either way, however that works, guys, it's probably going to be a buy the rumor, sell the news event. And so you can anticipate some upside over the coming weeks as everybody hypes up the merger. All right. The only way to get out of this debt is <laughs> we don't want that. A, a sequel to the 40s. Uh, no, that would not be good. Uh, wow. Uh, Diddy was moving some uh, drugs. Is it weird that the simulation named him Diddy, knowing that we would be watching the story and saying, well, Diddy? Uh, yeah. Diddy? Diddy do it? Diddy? Well, you know, that's a perfect distraction because what about his handlers, dude? Why am I not hearing about anything about their handlers? This is another Epstein situation. Dude. Oh, yeah. He's the this Epstein. Rap. Epstein. Yeah, he yeah. is the Epstein. Rap. He was using yeah. uh, S-word blackmail uh, in his penthouses. And uh, also, you know... He won't totally be found dead. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I feel like he's more famous than Epstein, so it'd be a bigger spotlight if he were to unalive. All right. Well, let's get back into crypto, everybody. Uh, back to the government here. House Republicans demanding the SEC and Gary Gensler, a.k.a. Goldman Gary, explain, hey, what's up with that? Talking about Promethium, uh, the chairman of two House committees, want Gary Gensler to describe how this special purpose crypto broker dealer can legally handle ETH. We have companies that have been applying for years. Uh, the Winklevoss twins have been trying for about a decade. Uh, and meanwhile, they had this company just spin up out of nowhere called Prometheum. And then it got all these special licenses and people started mm -hmm. digging into it. And it looked like uh, maybe some weird collusion was happening. Yeah. Uh, so they're demanding answers on this. We'll watch this story more closely. And especially if he's brought to uh, the Congress to testify, that'll be very, very big news. Uh, KuCoin, you're seeing a lot of KuCoin FUD right now. Uh, but uh, in the KuCoin FUD came a little bit, some glimmers of hope. One, KuCoin FUD has happened in the past. They've always been able to handle their withdrawals. I would say, you know, well, I'm not too worried about it. Second, uh, in a complaint, the CFTC called ETH a commodity as well as Litecoin in the KuCoin complaint. So that was pretty interesting to see. Uh, let's see, the House Republicans there. Munchables, there's a big hack. They retrieved all funds from the exploiter. Refund is in process and a, a big victory for Zach XBT making that happen. Did you yeah, see the Zach this tweet? This was insane. Should we share the tweet or is it Not too, the tweet, but the no, story is really good. The, the, the story is really good. So Munchables uh, essentially had this massive hack for $62 million. Actually, it looks like even maybe even a little bit more. Uh, turned out, I think you have the story highlighted, so it'll be easier yeah, for you yeah. to break According it down. According to uh, Munchables, uh, so they made a full recovery of the lost funds after the exploiter voluntarily returned the funds, avoiding the need for a ransom. Uh, they targeted a vulnerability in the contract that allowed them to uh, withdraw 17,000 ETH, worth $62 million. Well, Zach XBT discovered connections between some four addresses involved in the exploit, suggesting, hey, looks like the same person. Four different devs hired by the team and linked to the exploiter are likely the same person as they recommended each other for the job. So they brought in a hacker, and then the hacker's like, oh, we got to hire my buddy. He was the hacker. And those two guys were like, oh, we know a third guy. Meanwhile, it's him with the Groucho Mark mustache. And then they're like, oh, we know a fourth dude. And then that was him with his hat on backwards. Uh, they were all the same person. Uh, then it yeah. uh, looks like, so they stole all that funds. But then uh, took an incredible lift in the background, but I'm grateful the ex-Munchables dev opted to return the funds in the end without any ransom required. Uh, the platform followed up with a refund plan. So uh, if you were affected, it looks like there's a nice little exit strategy for you. So Zach XBT spooked him and he gave all the funds back. So just big victory for Zach there. Uh, run out of time. Optimism's going to uh, pump up some projects in the ecosystem. So just yeah. good for OP well, as I wanted, a whole I there. wanted to pull that one up too because we said we would talk about the products we're going to be watching. You want to talk about everything. Yes, we want to talk about We don't have all. time. So you but go ahead. really quick, guys, Optimism's ecosystem. Go watch it. Go follow it on CoinMarketCap. We already know Velodrome has been pumping relentlessly. It's up 18% now, or not 18%, but up 8% in the last 24 hours, up to 18 cents, up over 100% since we called it. And the rest of the ecosystem is benefiting from this announcement. Guys, layer twos, getting tons of investments. 
This is where your opportunity is. It's in the DeFi, it's in the lending, it's in the borrowing protocols that exist on top of these layers. That's what you want to pay attention to if you want to make money in these markets coming up. All right, Upstate South Carolina, uh, our from, all right. Uh, so one, it sucks. When your state, the best thing it did is, hey, Vanna White's from Myrtle Beach. Eh, maybe not a good thing. That being said, lovely weather. All right, Polka Dot is going to have Love a nice it. little breakout as well. I never made that Polka Dot video. I need to go ahead and start working on that. There are some Polka Dot ecosystem gems uh, that we have given and some have just done really, really well. I gave you guys a Kala uh, about three months ago. Oh, wow, 5% down today. But if we look, please be good. Okay, okay, I feel good about this one. All right, so we, yeah, we got in. I think it was around 10 cents right now. It's uh, pretty close to 20, was above 20 at one point. Uh, so good polka dot stuff. Pith just got another partnership with Merlin Chain. Mm -hmm. Merlin's like an old mm -hmm. 4chan coin. Do you remember that one, Nick? Oh, oh, I maybe actually, I'm thinking of Marlin. I'm thinking of Pond. <clears throat> never mind, never mind. Old, oh, his way was like four or five years ago. You just, Too said, long. you just said 4chan on YouTube, so we're done anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're done. <laughs> All right, uh, Ada rally. And then uh, this last story I want to cover for sure. Ada rallies 12% despite social media critics' performance. I, I shared that uh, video that we did yesterday. Uh, that tweet really started making some moves. So there is FUD. Oh, it's only 1.68 transactions per second. Cardano's dead. There's no way it's going to ever recover. Uh, but then, uh, you know, I, I shot this video. Video and we're at 39,000 views already. I appreciate the support. If you see it, you like what I'm saying here, please thank me uh, with a little like. That's all I'm at. You don't got to retweet. You don't got to comment. But if you want to hit the heart, I would appreciate it. Uh, I think that's uh, about all we got. Anything else you want to uh, add in? No, I mean... Oh, uh, wax. Yeah, well, we did have victory the Victory for yeah, laugh. Pull the, if you want to pull up the wax, wax. pull up the no, wax. No, victory laugh for wax. They just uh, got a pretty big thing with Amazon. And uh, victory for Azuki. Yeah, uh, that as was well, doing here. the thing with Arbitrum. So not uh, just, you know, just some partnerships there. Uh, we had inflows for ETF. So, you know, we could see there we broke the streak of red days. You can see it was kind of trending in that direction anyways. Very slightly in the green two days ago. But yesterday, look at that god sized green candle. So breaking out of the trend there. So uh, just oftentimes we see this kind of predict Bitcoin price action 48 hours later. Um, yeah. will, will it do the same? Uh, we'll, we'll be watching that. I guess we'll have to find out. But guys, oh, you had sure. an altcoin. Did you want to? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's did. time for us to. Josh said, "Hey, I well, I don't give you have the good." So yeah, so I wanted to pull up some alpha off the giant merge here because who's going to benefit the AI most alpha. from the AI merge? With of course AGIX, Fetch, and Ocean. So Fetch is the project I really wanted to pay attention to. Why? They're the ones that are converting first to ASI, and then everything else is flowing What's into What's ASI? Them. Let's back. Oh, so okay. ASI so that's is the new the token. New token. So three... they're the first of the three to be turned into the new token. Yes. And okay. so okay. with that leadership, I wanted to ask myself, okay, well, what are the DEXs? What is the ecosystem that is going to benefit from this? Like, why would they choose Fetch? And I believe they chose Fetch because of the interoperability since it's built on top of both Injective and Cosmos here. Ooh. So Cosmos' ecosystem, if you actually hold it up today, <laughs> is benefiting quite a bit from these announcements. You can see Fetch up 7% tier five protocol. This is one I just randomly clicked on on this stream. Seems kind of interesting. They are a play for uh, onboarding institutional money to DeFi. They claim they're the only gateway for this, accessing trillions of dollars. So when you see a massive announcement like this, guys, Get ahead of, cur of the curve. Get ahead of all the creators and the influence before the hundreds of videos come out about which projects you need to buy in this ecosystem. This is how you do that. And so I would recommend definitely going and looking through the Cosmos ecosystem, finding the decks, the ones that are focused on AI and DeepIn, because they will probably see a decent amount of value increase in them due to this announcement. All right. And uh, in the Cosmos ecosystem is Celestia. Um, so, you know, something interesting there, you know, I'll be uh, looking to see, is there any kind of cause, any Tia, Def or not DeFi, but DEXs or anything that have more li uh, liquidity than just Tia coins. So, all, all right, right all right. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, Cosmos yeah. is Adam. Adam has a whole bunch of coins built upon it. Uh, Tia is, you know, one of the newer, hotter ones. I did not know Tia has now surpassed Say. Uh, looks like those two wow. coins are battling back and forth for market cap right there. All right. Well, guys, that's what we got. See you tomorrow. Hey, appreciate it. Hit that like button. Ow!